All right. Hello, everyone, and thank you for being here to learn a bit more about the Maxwell and Washington program at Syracuse University. It's actually not an unusual thing that I hear because of Maxwell and Washington. I wanted to come to Syracuse, so maybe that'll be you one day talking about that a couple of years from now. My name is Rachel Skipper. I'm our Associate Director of Undergraduate Recruitment in the Maxwell School. Joining us today, we also have two faces for the Maxwell program. Uh, Mark Jacobson is our Assistant Dean for the Washington programs at Syracuse and is zooming in from DC. And Chris is our current student in the room, also one of my interns as well, works in admissions at Syracuse, so has a lot of great knowledge about the university, but for the purposes of today's session, is a recent graduate of the Maxwell semester, so uh, will be joining us uh, kind of to share the student perspective about the program. So Mark, do you want to introduce yourself to the group? And then Chris, same thing, and then we'll jump into our slides. Absolutely. Uh, again, now, great to uh, be with you this evening. Congratulations on uh, your admission uh, to Syracuse University. Uh, and of course, you know, I'm eager to speak to you a little bit tonight about the Maxwell and Washington program. Just a little bit about myself. Um, I've had a long career, uh, both in public service and uh, in government. Um, uh, I worked mainly in the defense and security uh, space. Uh, I also was a, a reserve officer in the U.S. Navy uh, for a little over 20 years uh, with service in Bosnia and Afghanistan. I've also spent some time working on Capitol Hill, so uh, I can tell you a little bit about what that's like. And I've worked uh, in what we call the think tank world and the nonprofit sector as well. So various foundations and organizations that focus on research or actually doing things uh, in uh, the foreign affairs and uh, security arena. And then finally, uh, I've taught at a couple of different institutions. Uh, I'm uh, here at uh, Syracuse at the Maxwell School now, where uh, I lead our efforts in Washington, D.C., and that includes both undergraduate programs, such as the one I'll speak to tonight. Uh, we also have graduate programs, and we have executive programs for seasoned professionals uh, who are uh, well into their careers, but one of the nice things about the program here is you'll get to uh, mix it up uh, with both uh, undergraduate and graduate students uh, when you're here in Washington. So with that, I'll, I'll turn it over to Chris. Sure. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, again, congratulations on your acceptance. Uh, my name is Chris Bezzadano. I'm a current senior in the Maxwell School, uh, double majoring in policy studies and citizenship and civic engagement. Um, I have a focus specifically in education policy. And I just returned, uh, I was in Washington, D.C. last semester through the Maxwell program. I uh, had a really great experience. Um, I had an internship with Penn Hill Group. They're an education and workforce consulting firm, and I'm actually uh, still working for them this semester remotely. And I'm happy to be talking more about that later on. But uh, again, like Rachel said, here to provide a little bit more about the student perspective and answer any questions you might have. So looking forward to it. Wonderful, and uh, we have a few slides to go through um, here. Uh, what I'll uh, what I'll do is just kind of give you a brief overview of the program. We host the Maxwell and Washington undergraduate semester in both the fall and the spring. Uh, notably, it's not a summer term. Uh, there are reasons for that. Uh, it has to do with the fact that uh, we like to focus on the internship, and we find that uh, internships are much more substantive uh, during the fall and spring terms. Uh, there are usually 15 to 18 students uh, in the program. Actually, this coming fall, we're going to have 21 students in the program. Uh, you basically are taking five uh, courses. Uh, you'll see here specifically uh, four courses in the classroom and one internship course. But that can be adjusted, too. We have some students who, instead of interning 20 hours a week, find themselves interning 40 hours a week. I'll get to that in a minute, in which case they might take three courses. Uh, all uh, Almost all of our courses are in the evening, except for an all-day seminar that I'll talk to you about later that's really the heart of the program here. Uh, we usually take students who have junior standing. Uh, we find that we have you know, usually a good mix of seniors and juniors. There are, from time to time, sophomores who come into our program, but there are uh, a variety of different reasons that that doesn't happen, some of it having to do with making sure you can get your on-campus coursework done, it also has to do with your level of experience as you go out and seek an internship. And all majors are welcome. We have arts, arts and sciences students who are rhetoric and English majors. We have Maxwell School students who are international affairs majors. We have uh, policy studies majors. Uh, we'll take everyone because we think that the, no matter what you're doing, 
if there's a, a link up, a lash up between uh, your field and what you want to do as a career in Washington, D.C., we want to give you the opportunity to explore that. Next slide, please. Uh, I think you have to click one more time. Are you not getting my slide? Uh, try one more. Ah, why Washington, D.C.? Sorry, we're, we're trying to be very fancy here. All right, why do you want to take a term off? Uh, maybe go a different direction. Uh, come down to Washington, D.C. Well, first, you want, really want to get an inside view of the policymaking process. Uh, we help provide a focus on foreign policy and international affairs, although I should point out that we have a number of students who come to our program whose interests include healthcare, education, uh, legislative affairs, you know, general policy work. So it's not exclusively foreign policy and international affairs. More importantly, I want you to come away with a basic understanding of how Washington works, the interplay between policy and policymakers, how strategies are development, advocacy organizations, whether those are partisan groups or groups that represent a particular segment of society. For example, you know, Association of, of um, uh, the American Association of Retired Persons advocating for folks who are retired, veterans organizations advocating on behalf of veterans. Also, your courses are going to be a bit different down here. Um, they are less theoretical, more practical. They are seminars taught by people who are doing the things that they are teaching about. For example, uh, we have a course uh, this coming fall that's going to be focused on the, the uh, security situation in Europe and the war in Ukraine. Uh, being taught by a senior Department of Defense official uh, who uh, she's been involved with uh, a lot of the planning for uh, countering the Russians in Ukraine and has been involved in NATO uh, work, North Atlantic Treaty Organization, uh, NATO Alliance work for a, a couple of decades now. So again, you're going to get a chance to study with her and start to understand uh, practical aspects of what's going on in Europe. And finally, all of our courses are really designed to support your real world work experience. It gives you an opportunity to explore not just what you think you want to do, but to test that assumption. Uh, I was just speaking with one of our students the other day who has come away with their internship deciding they want to go in an entirely different direction, but they're glad they did the internship because otherwise they might have found themselves in a job next year in a field they're really not that interested in. So again, we are taking a different approach to how you do your coursework down here. We uh, focus on the types of writing you'll have to do if you're out in the workplace. And we really are trying to support this internship experience uh, well, by giving you both coursework and a professional development program uh, that, that supports that effort. For example, right now, uh, our students are just about to begin a session uh, with an individual who specializes in uh, presentations, briefings, and how to communicate using verbal and nonverbal means out to an audience so you can be more persuasive. That's the type of work you'll get a chance to do down here. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, just uh, repeating, uh, you'll just have to click a few times, Rachel. Um, apologies. The um, This is just to give you a rundown of some of the types of faculty we have. You'll see we've had people who've worked in the US intelligence community. Uh, we have nationally and internationally recognized experts in their field. Uh, we have some of the best uh, instructors from the Maxwell School uh, helping you to navigate the landscape down here. Um, for example, right now, uh, Professor Nayara Hawk, uh, she was a former host on Sirius XM. Uh, she was the chief foreign affairs co correspondent on the Black News Channel. And she also worked up at the White House in the Department of State. Um, and she is teaching a course right now on media and diplomacy in the modern era. Uh, we've had Nina Jankowitz, who's an internationally known expert on disinformation, uh, teach a course on disinformation in the digital age, and again, so on and so forth. We want these courses uh, to be taught by experienced practitioners, uh, and, and we think that brings a bit more realism to what we're doing down here. And finally, all of our courses are going to give you a number of uh, guest speakers. In fact, the uh, uh, our course, uh, our core course. Uh, Global Policy Seminar 1 and 2 uh, averages between 25 and 40 speakers that come in per term, and that includes ambassadors, uh, includes directors of different programs in the U.S. government. Uh, we've had former we've had former governors come in, members of Congress. Again, those people who are doing what's on the front page of the news most days. 
Next slide, please. Just to give you an idea of, of, of the courses, um, we have two required courses that you have to take. Uh, the first is the Global Policy Seminar. That's really a six credit uh, seminar. So uh, that meets all days Friday, all day Fridays. We call it our traveling seminar. The reason being that that's where you're gonna go visit the Russian embassy, the Supreme Court, the Pentagon, the State Department, and we'll bring in, uh, I mentioned the 25 to 40 guest speakers who will come in and you can discuss some of the hottest topics, some of the most controversial topics that are out there. Uh, the other required course is of course the internship course. Uh, we then give you an opportunity to uh, select courses um, if you, Rachel, if you could hit uh, the button one more time. Yeah, um, I apologize if there's confusion here, but this is really what a schedule would look like. <coughs> you would pick uh, a course on a Monday or and Tuesday or a Monday and Wednesday or a Tuesday and Wednesday uh, in the evenings. You'd intern uh, four to uh, three to four days a week, depending on that internship and the hours. And then on Thursday nights are free for professional development or just to have a night off. And then you have your all-day seminar on a Friday. And I think uh, what this gives you an opportunity to do is dive into areas that interest you. For example, maybe you're interested in human rights, civil rights, and social movements. Uh, maybe you're interested in media and diplomacy. Maybe you want to take a course with the Newhouse School that focuses on democracy, journalism, and citizenship. We try and give you those options, but we also feel that you should have kind of a, a core grounding in how Washington works as well. Uh, we're pretty flexible. Uh, when it comes to uh, trying, or we are able to be flexible to help you to integrate the coursework into your internship work, because we know not every internship is the same. Uh, next slide, please. Before we move on, I just had a question in the chat that I thought you might want to answer kind of on the topic of coursework. Um, one student messaged me to ask um, whether these classes fit well with Maxwell graduation requirements, and I know the answer to that is yes, but Chris, do you want to talk at all about what courses you selected, why, and how that fits into kind of a standard graduation timeline? Yeah, of course. So I believe last semester I took the um, the disinformation and influence course that Professor Jankowitz taught. Um, I also took the global political economy with Professor Casey. And then our global seminar. So I think I had class, I think it was Monday, Wednesday evenings, then that policy seminar on Friday. Um, for me, those courses, um, they basically checked off a lot of my requirements for social sciences. Um, and I think the Maxwell and DC program actually does a great job of making sure that all the courses you're taking are going to count towards those requirements. I know a number of my peers have also petitioned them for uh, major course requirements or other uh, programs for their minors, and they've gotten approved as well. So I think it's definitely a good use to take any of these courses, and I just encourage you to take whatever's kind of of interest to you. I think I would have taken the politics, power, and global sport class if that was offered during my semester. It sounds pretty cool. Um, but I think really any of these would fit well into sort of the core curriculum that we have in arts and sciences in Maxwell. Yeah, the, uh, the other piece I would uh, mention, uh, Chris spoke to this idea of petitioning. Um, Courses have different prefixes. Some courses are history, some are political science, some some are, you know, for us, it's international relations, history, political science is likely what you're, you're going to see, sometimes policy studies. We're actually working to adjust that a bit to give you a little bit more of a wild card option. But the bottom line is, if you work with your, uh, your guidance counselors and advisors, not only can you, you, you can always work these in as electives. Um, but what we want to do is, is have you be able to work these in to support your major field. So, for example, uh, we've been able to take one of our classes and make it so it supports the international relations capstone requirement. Uh, we uh, started offering classes with uh, uh, prefixes uh, from history and policy studies to give the policy studies students a little bit more of a range uh, in, in courses. In the past, most of the, the courses were international relations, but even then, it wasn't a problem. Um, and we can always work with uh, different department chairs and advisors to make sure they understand whether or not what's in the course you're taking is going to support the requirement. And you'll find Maxwell as an institution is very supportive of the idea of an interdisciplinary approach to your education. And frankly, that's one that's going to make it, make it much more valuable for you uh, when it comes to the job hunt. Awesome. Thank you both. And students, I hope you're hearing this is not a semester away from your studies at Syracuse, right? This is an enhancement of what we hope you're doing on campus. So this is certainly not something that would push you 
past a traditional timeline with us. I think that was sort of the nature of the question uh, or maybe the thought behind the question that I received. So no concerns there. And thanks, Mark and Chris, for the additional info. Sure. No, I think that this makes you more effective uh, if you're going back up to campus. And then other students wait until their second term senior year uh, and they use it as an opportunity to roll straight into a full-time job. So, um, you know, internships come with uh, whether they're government agencies, non-governmental organizations, the nonprofit world, the private sector. And it's uh, really, it, it's three to four days a week. Uh, generally, we, we encourage our students to do maybe 20 to 22 hours a week of an internship. Um, we don't place you. This isn't a canned internship. You are searching for this internship and we'll help you along the way. Uh, we're we're going to, we want you though to search, apply for, and negotiate these positions. Why? This is great practice for when you're uh, on the hunt for a regular job. Um, and it's a lot better to get some practice when it comes to an internship than it is to be thrown right into that when you need a job after graduation. So uh, you'll see just a representative list, but I can tell you that we've had our students intern at well over 200 different organizations in Washington, D.C. Um, you know, we were trying to put together a list of every distinct organization. It was amazing. Uh, there was hardly a place in Washington where uh, interns had not worked. And what's wonderful, it gives you a chance to leverage the, the uh, Maxwell Network in Washington, D.C. too, uh, to talk to the alumni who are working at senior roles in U.S. government and in the private sector who might be at the type of place you want to do an internship. Uh, next slide, please. I'm just going to go over real quick. Uh, we have a partnership with the Center for Strategic and International Studies, one of the top think tanks in the world, and that's where your classes meet. So it gives you an opportunity to actually see what a major think tank is like. The facilities are absolutely wonderful, and it also is the type of place where senior uh, senior uh, guest speakers want to go. We tell them, hey, would you like to come by the Center for Strategic and International Studies to be, speak with a Maxwell School class? And that, that's a real attraction for them. And it is for you too. We're only a couple blocks from the White House. Uh, the housing facilities are just a few blocks away as well. Um, they are very nice. Uh, Chris, you were, were you in the new housing last term? Uh, yeah, over at Thomas. Okay. Yeah, I mean, there, it's really great housing. Um, and again, Washington's a, a tough place if you're on your own to find housing. But again, we try and keep everything within walking distance of the metro and, and your courses. Uh, last slide, please. Uh, just to let you know, another question you might have is tuition and costs. So tuition is the same tuition as on campus. And significantly, all your existing financial aid would apply. So in other words, um, you know, if you're uh, taking loans or you're on a grant or a scholarship, that can be used to cover your time down in Washington, D.C. as well. And again, we also have additional funding because we realize that Washington, D.C. is an expensive place to live and study, and we want to try and do what we can to make sure that uh, you have the funding you need to get through the program here. Um, during my time, I have not lost anyone who had to withdraw uh, because of the cost of the program. We know this is important uh, to the university. Uh, that you get an opportunity to be down here. And so we were able to make that happen again through additional grants and work study programs. Let me let me turn it over to Chris again to really give you his view on what I've discussed in terms of the program, the courses, the internship, because you know he's gonna he's gonna be a little closer to the ground on this than I am. Uh, I get to watch what 250 different graduate and undergraduate students do a year. Uh, but Chris can tell you really what it's like to be in the program as a student. Yeah, I mean, where to start? Um, I guess I'll say um, my cohort and I were super close. Uh, we actually still are super close. Um, as a matter of fact, every week we usually get together for lunch or dinner or kind of a core group of us. So I still see a lot of the other you know students I was with that we were living together. Um, I would say the my favorite part of the whole program was definitely the internship. Um, so to talk more about that, um, again, it was um, working for an education and workforce consulting firm. So I had a number of um, clients who were kind of focused in higher education, uh, K-12 issues, and I got to project manage for a lot of them. So I was actually writing letters to people in the Senate or the House of Representatives, uh, people at the education department and other government agencies kind of advocating for uh, certain policies and priorities that a lot of my clients um, were either for or against. Um, I got to uh, a number of times uh, actually go up to Capitol Hill and meet with 
a few staffers, a couple of representatives as well, which was really neat. Um, and I feel like uh, I wasn't the only one that had an internship like that. I know um, a few of my other peers who worked, uh, you know, for the representative or for their state senator um, got that experience too. I know uh, one of my peers, uh, she interned for Senator Chris Murphy, and she got to sit in on a meeting with him and the Surgeon General and talk about um, some kind of upcoming policies that they were working on and hoping to uh, work together with. And so I think um, you kind of get a lot of that real world experience. And I really feel like it kind of affirmed for me that I would want to maybe live and have a career in DC someday. Uh, I'm actually still working for uh, the company I was interning for. I'm actually contracting with them now, uh, flying me down next week, actually to meet with some clients and again, to go to Capitol Hill and uh, talk to some folks. And uh, it was really overall a great experience. And I feel like I got a lot of um, a lot of experiences I wouldn't have gotten just by staying kind of on main campus. And so um, even though maybe it can be a little nerve wracking to step away from campus for a little bit uh, and kind of branch out, uh, I think there's a really good network in DC, especially with uh, the alumni program that we have. I know we had um, alumni ambassadors that kind of were mentors for a lot of us in the program. They uh, met with us and we I went back and forth with one that we managed to meet up for coffee and he kind of, you know, advised me on sort of my like career path that I was thinking of. Um, and I think for that reason, too, there was also a lot of um, room during the courses and especially in that all day seminar um, to really talk about our internships with each other. And I got to learn a lot of from my other peers of what they were doing on a day to day basis, because what I was doing for work uh, probably looks very different from someone that was working on Capitol Hill or uh, in the nonprofit sector. So it was cool to kind of hear about their experiences and kind of be able to share that together. Um, and I should mention the housing was great. Uh, we got to be there um, kind of in uh, the end of summer, kind of when it was still nice out. And I know the apartments in Thomas Circle, we had a rooftop pool and some grills that we got to use for the first few weeks. So that was definitely nice um, and a good kind of way to hang out for the first couple of weeks and get to know your cohort. Um, I will say because it's so small, you become very close with the 20 or so people you're with. Like I said, we still have our group chat going. Uh, we still see each other around campus um, and even some of the professors that uh, go back and forth between campus and DC. I still see on a regular basis and sometimes we'll grab lunch with uh, here. So it's it's a really great program and a great network that kind of uh, will stay with you, whether uh, you're a junior and you know still have some time to graduate or if you're like me and going to be a graduating senior in only 30 days and it kind of have that network to lean back on afterwards. Perfect. Wonderful. Thank you for chiming in. Um, Rachel, I think we can, you know, dispense with the slides and I'm happy to answer any questions and I think Chris will be as well. I have been getting some private message. All I think the questions in the chat are private messages to me. So sorry that you're not, are not seeing those, but students, you're welcome to send me your questions if you want them to want me to ask anonymously. I know you've been impressed now by Chris and Mark, and I don't want you to feel intimidated. So feel free to send me your questions or send them in the chat. Um, one question for Chris, um, and then I have some more logistics questions for you, Mark, about internships. Um, for Chris was, they were asking about the balance between classes and internships. You know, was it difficult to remain strong in your classes and strong in the internship at the same time? How are you kind of managing those time commitments um, with your level of stress, I think is something they're also wondering about. Yeah, um, I think it was very, actually a really great balance that was kind of complemented by the professors themselves. So I know for me, I was um, actually interning about 35 hours a week. So I was doing a full nine to five uh, Monday through Thursday for the most part, maybe 32 hours. Um, but I was able to, you know, even though I had classes in the evenings, um, professors were super understanding um, and kind of knowing that the internship was obviously a big focus of spending our time in DC. Um, and like I said, kind of providing that outlet to be able to just talk about it and kind of debrief about our experiences. And I feel like that kind of helped to also lighten the load or maybe the stress of having to do uh, everything at once. Uh, and then I will say too, um, again, your peers, a great group of people to lean on as well. Um, I think they also, we, you know, um, through the program, we got uh, Metro passes. Um, they were kind of an unlimited Metro pass to explore the city. So I know on the weekends and on our days off, we got to kind of explore together and that kind of got you out of the classroom, out of the office a little bit and kind of got to also enjoy being in DC. And so I felt like for that, it was a very well-rounded experience and it wasn't too 
too stressful in either of those areas for sure. Just to add to that, uh, I didn't realize Chris was doing 32 hours. Uh, that that's a that's a big tough that's a tough semester. Um, usually, when students go above 30, we start to talk to them about um, you know reorganizing. We have some students, for example, who intern at the Department of State or at the White House who have no choice but to do a 40 hour a week internship. Now that's going to include Fridays as well. So the the one classroom experience they'll miss is the core course, the 401, 402. Is that the end of the world? Not necessarily. Uh, what we try and do is, is, is try and make sure that you're involved in professional development activities. Uh, we actually have adjusted the way we do our professional development now uh, to make most of it on Thursdays, Thursday evening. So it really doesn't impact those uh, who are doing the 40 hour week internships. Um, also, um, you know, a dirty little secret is that I go talk to the instructors and that we make sure that your reading load and workload is manageable within the context of having a 20 hour or 30 hour a week internship. In other words, um, are the students going to go away saying that this, that a course down in Washington, D.C. had more reading than any other course they had at Syracuse? Absolutely not. Um you know, we would rather that you bring the experiences from that internship to help inform the discussion. And, and to that degree, you're going to find that uh, we try and keep your workload at about 10 hours a week per course outside of class, if not a little less, to be honest with you. Um, you'll find, Chris, am I wrong in that 401, 402? You didn't really have a heavy reading load, correct? Not at all. I mean, there were certain weeks, and honestly, for when we bring in a lot of the guest speakers, it was mostly reading their bios, learning more about them before they came to talk to the class, and then a couple of writing assignments. So that course wasn't very reading heavy. Yeah. And we, you know, each course is a little bit different. We focus, we're not the home of the 25 page research paper. We teach you about writing policy memos. And I tell our instructors that I'd rather you write and rewrite a policy, a one page policy memo five times than do a five page paper because no one in Washington reads five page papers much less 25 or 30 or 100 page papers. What people read are one and two page memos that take really complex information and distill it into easily digestible policy options. And I will tell you, that is a lot harder to do than it is to do a five page memo. Uh, in fact, my graduate students, we start them off at about a three page memo and then I give them two days to cut that down into a one page memo. And that's one of the most difficult assignments they find that they have. But that's the reality of Washington. Um, let me say one other thing. I, I saw the question about um, uh, the process of application, how competitive it is. Um, I have to look at it a different way. Um, if you want to come to the program, you're going to make it into the program. Now, there are times we're overwhelmed and you may not get in the exact term you want. Um, but we are actually starting something new where we are having some people apply their sophomore year and telling us, hey, I want to be there in my second term of my junior year. Uh, in the past, you've just applied for the, the next term, but we're starting to let people apply for future terms so they can do their planning. So that's actually really not the limitation. Uh, there is a grade point minimum, and the reason is that we need you to be able to write well, communicate effectively, and handle not just the workload and the balance with the internship, but to handle that internship itself. So, you know, if you need, you know, if you need to pull up your grade point and that's a re reflection of you're not necessarily a strong critical thinker, we need you to be a better critical thinker because you'll be more effective at the internship. And uh, we have a good sense of, you know, does it mean that people with below a three point can't make it into the program? Nope. We've had people with lower grade points, but usually there's a reason for it. Uh, so, you know, your first term in college is often a difficult transition. Uh, so, you know, if maybe you did poorly your first term, but then you've been wonderful uh, all the way through, but you didn't make that three point, we're going to look at that. So again, the idea is not so much, how do we keep you from doing it? It's more, how do we make sure you're prepared to do this program in Washington if you want to do it and when you want to do it? Awesome. Thank you for that clarification. Um, another question for you, Mark. Um, I ran this by Chris already, and he said he's not sure. Um, could you talk a little bit more about any of the finance-related um, internships that students are doing? That wasn't what Chris did, but a student did ask him about it. Um, are there finance-focused 
uh, speakers that you bring in, finance focused internships, et cetera. Yeah, and I'm going to go broad on this. So it won't necessarily be finance in the terms that you'd find on the mercantile market on uh, in Chicago or Wall Street and hedge funds and investment banking. Uh, where we focus really is on uh, economics, markets, and trade broadly. So we've had students who intern at the World Bank. In fact, one of our students uh, uh, from Chris's class, uh, we just flew down here on Sunday, and she is actually participating as a member of the U.S. delegation to the Spring World Bank meetings. I've never even gotten to participate as a member of the delegation uh, at the Spring World Bank meeting. So um, we also make sure that we have a good um, a good relationship with the U.S. Department of Commerce, uh, and of course their International Trade Authority uh, has a number of internships as well. We've placed students at the Department of Treasury uh, to work on things, you know, so, but that, that was more uh, in terms of people working on uh, financial crimes. Um, so again, uh, are there opportunities? Absolutely. I'm probably forgetting a number of places as well. Um, the Peterson Institute for International Economics, there's a finance angle to what they do as well. Um, have we placed, but we, I'm not aware of us having placed anyone at, let's say a banking organization here in Washington, DC. However, just because we haven't done it before, doesn't mean we can't do it in the future. As I said, finding the internship, um, you tell us what you're interested in, and we're going to help you use the resources at the arts and sciences career center or at the Palmer center, uh, the Palmer career center. Uh, or we're also going to help you teach you how to network in terms of uh, using things like LinkedIn to find Maxwell alums at particular places. So there is a there are a there's a wealth of resources available to you uh, in terms of the internship search. We have career field guides. So if you're interested in international development, this is the starting point. Here's the types of places you can look at. Um, a lot of it is the art and science of searching on Google and LinkedIn. You know, I tell people, if you're interested, let's say you're interested in finance, Google finance internship, I'm sorry, type in finance internships on LinkedIn. See what you come up with. You may, because if there's a job out there that's related to what you want to do, there may be an internship out there. It We teach you how to find the companies, how to work backwards. Um, a, it's a lot of legwork. There's a lot of time you put into it. So uh, someone asked the question about, how, well, when do you start the internship search? There is nothing wrong with starting it early. Start it now. You know, if you think you want to be doing some internships, maybe summer after your freshman year, I think there are other things you could do to enhance your, your skill sets, be, you know, rather than interning right away. But um, if some jobs, for example, the U.S. Department of State, we tell people to be applying about a year out. Uh, because jobs at the Department of State require a security clearance and the background investigation takes some time. So if you told me you were interested in, in interning at the Department of State uh, your, your first term senior year, uh, you should be really thinking about it at the end of your sophomore year because you'll want to be applying in fall of your junior year. In other cases, yes, you're searching six weeks out because some places don't even put out their internship opportunities until six weeks out. But what's something you could be doing? Well, look at the opportunities the semester before or the semester before that. So you are already with the type of cover letter you need. You've wor worked at the uh, Arts and Sciences Career Center to get your resume up to speed. I mean, and you've done that a semester before. And then maybe all you have to do is add in a particular job you did uh, as a research assistant or during the summer. Uh, so yes, the earlier, the better. Um, and we do provide uh, resources uh, but that's you start that on campus, and then the way I describe Washington D.C. is we're sort of fine-tuning you. Um, we actually just revamped um, after some experiences of the last two terms. Uh, we revamped our professional development program. Uh, my assistant director, who who is down with the, the undergrads right now, uh, Samantha Clements, spends a lot of one-on-one -on -one time with the students. Um, I know that's something Chris didn't have the opportunity to have, but. Um, you know, we're always trying to improve where the program is. And we realize, as I said, in the end, this is about the internship. This is about your opportunity uh, to have the internship in Washington and pair that up with the types of courses that are going to make you more effective when you go out on the job market. Awesome. Very helpful. Um, I have a stockpile of questions here. Um, I'll start by answering one and then I'll pitch the next couple of questions to both of you. 
Um, first, I had a student, actually multiple people asked the same question, um, could I do Maxwell in DC and also study abroad somewhere else during my four years? The answer to that is yes, within reason, right? So if you have three majors at Syracuse and you're trying to study abroad multiple semesters, Yes, you can still do that. You may be a little pressed for time. You might be a Chris and you might be really pushing some semesters to their max, but it can happen. If you're a student who has one major and a minor, for example, so a little bit of a lighter schedule, um, in our opinion, then it would be relatively simple to do a Maxwell semester and a study abroad semester for the same reason that I mentioned earlier, which is that this is not a pause on your study. This is an enhancement of your study. So we would request that you work with an academic advisor, follow Mark's advice from earlier, which is to plan early, talk to them and say, two of these semesters of my time at Syracuse, I want to be gone. They will kind of pigeonhole courses or schedule courses into those semesters that are offered abroad. So as long as you plan early, yes, that is certainly possible. I would not recommend that you hang around on campus for two years, keep this as a personal secret, and then tell your advisor you'd like to do two semesters of your last two years abroad, that's when you could get into trouble. But with advanced planning, of course, Maxwell and Washington doesn't have to be your only semester off campus. Um, planning is just key. I have another question for you, Mark, which kind of pairs with another question. Someone asked, are internships ever paid? And if so, are there limitations on international students obtaining the necessary documents, visa, et cetera, that they would need to work internationally while a student with us? I don't yes. know if you have experience with that yet. So um, to the first question, there are more paid internships in Washington every year. Um, I don't have a percentage breakdown of, of the number of our students who've had paid versus unpaid internships, but um, um, there's also an issue in Washington, D.C. You have a minimum wage law, so they actually pay pretty well in most cases. Other places will give you a, will have unpaid internships and they'll give you a stipend. Um, and we help you navigate, you know, whether it's whether or not you need to take a paid internship that's not as exciting for you versus the unpaid one. That's exactly what you want to do. And that's one of the reasons we have some grants and work study opportunities as well. Uh, in terms of international students, um, you know, you're going to be over on an F1 visa, so it you you can do an internship. Um, I actually don't. I don't know if there's a limitation on being paid. I actually that's a really good question, um, Rachel. I don't know if you know the answer to that as well, but I, it hasn't come up with I us right now. By Samantha and get back to the student after the session. Yeah, well. let, let's mind. do that. Um, now there are some things that an international student would have to do prior to doing an internship. For example, um, you have to be, uh, you would have to take some training that we call uh, curricular practical training. In other words, this internship is part of your, uh, it's part of your program as well. And the, uh, but, but that's really a bureaucratic administrative and, and uh, paperwork issue. So there's no limitation otherwise. Um, uh, to that, but yeah, we'll check with Samantha and get back to you on the the paid issue. Uh, paid issue. Um, I don't want to steer you the wrong way. Great. Quick question, and then we'll go to Kiki's question, which is in the chat. Um, the question from earlier that I don't want to let go is: um, Are classes graded pass fail, or are they graded letter grades? Chris, I assume it's the latter. Yeah, all of mine were letter grades, but I don't know if Dean Jacobson if there are certain exceptions that you consider. You know, I, I've never, I don't think I've ever had someone raise the pass fail issue. Um, if someone raised the pass fail issue, we would probably have a discussion about it. Um, but that grading option is usually more of a function of what your major is going to require and what you're using the, the course for. Um, but yeah, we've never, never had, I can't think of anyone in the past uh, two and a half years, almost three now who's ever raised the issue of a, a pass-fail grade. I think everyone's taken them for, for a letter grade. Yeah, and I'll add that, especially if you're taking some of the courses for your major. I know the university in general does not allow you to take those courses pass-fail. Yeah. It's on the letter grade scale. But again, the classes, in my experience, weren't much more difficult than the ones that we had on campus. And there was kind of understanding that you know, the internship is a big reason why a lot of students are there. And so I think it's duly supported in the classroom as well. And so uh, the professors that I had were great. And if I was ever, I mean, I had to 
you know, if I was having a difficult time, I could always talk to one of them and um, figure out, you know, a way to get some extra help in the classroom or just kind of where I could improve my grade in some areas. Um, but I would say that was never really an issue that I ran into. Great, thank you. Um, do one or both of you wanna chime in on the question in the chat? We've now come to the end of the list, so we're caught up. Um, can any of you talk, can either of you talk more about the role of alumni ambassadors in the program? I mean, I'm not, there's really not a formal role for alumni ambassadors in our Maxwell and DC program. Um, alumni ambassadors, um, yeah, I, we, we don't, we really don't have them involved with uh, what we're doing. It's more that alumni ambassadors are, uh, are helping to promote, like we would have, like Chris, if he was to become an alumni ambassador at some point, he would promote our program. So I may misunderstand what you're getting at in terms of the question. I don't know if it was necessarily alumni ambassadors, but I know that especially the DC area has um, a large community of Maxwell alumni. So Seven, over 7,000 Maxwell alums in the DC area. Yeah, and they put on a ton of events for alumni, but also for a lot of current students. So I know me and my peers actually attended a few of those events that were kind of around the city. Um, sometimes it was as simple as just going to watch the Syracuse Clemson game uh, down in Navy Yard, but also um, I know there were some that I was able to reach out to and uh, they're usually super eager to meet up for coffee. And a lot of them have either uh, done the DC program or are now living there and have experience in kind of the same sectors that we're doing our internships in. Um, and so that's kind of where um, I was able to meet up with them and it wasn't really through a necessarily a formal ambassador type program that the program has. So for those of you wondering about Maxwell Alumni Ambassadors, um, this is a resource that's available to any, I would, should probably say any Syracuse student, but more close to home, more strongly used by Maxwell students. Maxwell has a, a group of alumni ambassadors who kind of work to advocate for the university, speak on behalf of the university, participate in events for the school um, after they graduate. So these are people who actually are good resources for you now because they will work with students who are not yet admitted to the university and students who are thinking about enrolling after admission. So it's just a group of ambassadors who help with all things Maxwell. Um, I imagine, like Chris said, that some of them are having a hand in meeting with students who are in D.C. for part of this program, but it's not something you would need to be part of this program to access. And like I mentioned, if you want to talk to a Maxwell alumni ambassador, you can do that now before coming to the university to talk about um, like what it was like for them at the school. I will leave the link to those ambassadors in the chat if anyone is interested in that. Um, it looks like we are slowing down with questions. So Mark do, or Chris, do you have any closing remarks that you wanna leave the students with while I look up that link? Sure, and also uh, I did. I was able to get an answer to the question. Yes, under curricular practical training, an international student can do a paid internship. So, uh, and that's with the F1, F1 visa. And also there's, uh, uh, there's some other uh, training options as well. Uh, it's called OPT, optional, pra uh, optional professional training but that's after you graduate. Uh, the only difference to that, and I'm not sure we have anyone online who, who would meet this, um, is a foreign exchange student cannot do an internship, uh, but that's, uh, I don't think that applies to anyone here. Um, in any event, um, I, would, I would just say that it's important to, I, I wanna emphasize what Rachel said about the importance of planning ahead. Um, you should be thinking about your freshman year and once you start to get through that, what is it that you want to do your next couple of years? And planning ahead, whether it's to do a semester of study away at, at Maxwell in D.C. or trying to go abroad or trying to do both. Um, it's really about planning and, and putting out, uh, you know, and discussing with your, your uh, counselors, discussing with your uh, other advisors uh, how you do this, when you do this. Um, and then, of course, there's always going to be trade-offs. Um, you know, as Rachel said, you're not going to be able to, it's pretty hard if you're going to do a double major to go to two study abroads and then come to Washington, D.C. as well. But do understand one of the things we're able to offer is our courses are going to be part of your major field requirements in most cases, uh, whether that's uh, directly or through a petition uh, to have those added on. And we're also... Um, 
Uh, again, the other thing I would emphasize is use us as an opportunity to try those things out that you think you want to do in your career later on, whether that's as a run-up uh, in your senior year to getting the job or something you're trying out early in your junior year uh, to see if you're interested at all. That, that's really kind of where I'd leave it. And I'll turn it over to Chris for the last comment. Yeah, I think I kind of said this earlier, but um, for me, it was really an experience that kind of reaffirmed me uh, wanting to potentially live and work in DC someday. And uh, had such a great experience that again, still in touch with a lot of my my peers, the professors, uh, and still working with the internship that I had for just a few months there. So you can really come, you know, come into the program and, um, you know, with the flexibility and kind of with what you want to get out of it, you can make the most of the program and be able to take out, take away certain things, uh, whether it's the internship, whether it's the relationship building uh, with professors, alumni, other peers. Uh, and so for that reason, I think it's a really great program. And uh, honestly, it was uh, also one of the um, one of the reasons that I chose to come to Maxwell and to Syracuse specifically when I was applying uh, four or five years ago. So it's kind of uh, bittersweet to kind of see it come full circle now. But uh, it's definitely a great program and I uh, can't recommend it enough. Great. Well, thank both of you for um, spending some time with us on Zoom today. I know you're both incredibly busy with a lot of obligations. And so I appreciate you spending some time on Zoom with uh, students who are thinking about enrolling or will be on campus in the fall. Students, I hope the session was useful to you and that you were able to learn a lot from both Chris and Mark. Uh, if I can help you learn more about the program in the future, just let me know. I will either be able to answer your question or as you've seen today, pitch <laughs> your questions to uh, both of my co-hosts here. Um, I'm glad that you all spent some time with us as well. I know this is a busy time for admissions and you're flooded with other Zoom opportunities so I really am flattered that you spent some time with us here today, though I think you can see now this was a good use of your time, as would the Maxwell program um, be if you came to Maxwell and wanted to go to D.C. So we appreciate you being here again. Please reach out to me in the future when you have questions about this or anything else Syracuse related. I'm happy to chat with you then. Thanks, everyone. We'll talk to you next time.